everybody. Welcome back to Lab 207 Webcast. I'm Mr. Kite. I'll be your guide for the day. Today we are continuing on in our series on cells. And as you can see, our subtitle today is just other organelles. In our last video, we talked about the endomembrane system. Today we're going to talk about a couple of outliers and a little bit about why they are different. So as always, a couple of objectives to start you out. They are explain how mitochondria and chloroplasts are different from other organelles. Describe the endosymbiotic theory and compare and contrast mitochondria and chloroplasts. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, big word for the day, endosymbiotic theory. Here's where this came from. Scientists were trying to come up with an idea about how prokaryotic cells move to being eukaryotic cells, or better stated, how eukaryotic cells came to exist and where did organelles come from. As scientists started to think through the possible origins of organelles, they realized that chloroplasts and mitochondria are a little bit different from the others in that they've got a double membrane where other organelles have a single membrane, and they have got their own DNA where the other organelles do not. So scientists came up with the hypothesis that maybe at some point in time, and follow along on our goofy little picture here, maybe at some point in time you had some small little prokaryotes hanging out, there was a larger bacteria, who might have been a eukaryote, hanging out. The prokaryotes, they started to cozy up to our eukaryote and thus began symbiosis. Symbiosis is just a fancy term for living together and cooperating. So after they started their symbiosis, they actually got to cooperative living, which ended up being beneficial for our eukaryote here because these little prokaryotes that came on the scene they had the ability to manufacture energy before this time the eukaryote wouldn't have had such an easy time getting energy but by living symbiotically with these little prokaryotes he now had like an onboard power station so that's the best guess about how mitochondria and chloroplast became part of eukaryotic cells. Um, I'm sure other theories will be advanced, but this one is pretty well accepted for several reasons. Let's talk about why. Here are some of the points that are used to support the endosymbiont theory. First one is that our mitochondria and chloroplast, they have a double membrane. All of the other organelles we talked about in the endomembrane video, they all have got a single membrane. So double membrane versus a single membrane. Also, chloroplasts and mitochondria have got ribosomes and circular DNA. So this means that they've got their own genetic material that is separate from the genetic material of the rest of the cell. And finally, these guys have got the ability to grow and reproduce independently. All of the other organelles rely on information from the DNA when the cell is going to split. Mitochondria and chloroplasts, they can do their own thing when it comes to reproduction. So take all that together and you have got reasons why that science, why scientists believe that at some point in time mitochondria and chloroplasts might have been their own little prokaryotes living freely before they started living with eukaryotic cells. Individually speaking, we have got our mitochondria up first. Always structure, then function, because structure relates to function. So right here we've got a pretty sweet drawing of a mitochondria. And there's a couple things I want you to note. Like I said earlier, it has a double membrane. So here's the first membrane. You can see it surrounded around the outside. Second membrane is this twisted up mess on the inside. All right, couple of vocabulary words. This twisted mass right here is known as criste, C-R-I-S-T-A-E. That is the criste. Inside of the cristae, all of this area that's filled in, it's filled with a fluid that is known as the matrix. And then in between this part right here, the cristae and the outer membrane, this area right here, that is the intermembrane space. I'm not going to write that down because it's a lot of letters, but that's the intermembrane space. So that is the structure of our mitochondria Cellular respiration, or the production of ATP, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks, happens in this membrane right here. So it is beneficial for this membrane to be all folded up because that increases its surface area, which means that it can have more machinery for making ATP. So that would be the structure of our mitochondria. With regard to function, just a couple of quick simple points. It uses oxygen to generate ATP, 
and it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Now, ATP is the energy currency in our bodies. Eventually, everything you eat gets broken down and is used to produce ATP. Then your body uses that ATP to actually carry out the functions that it does on a daily basis. So because the mitochondria makes ATP, it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Also, these guys have the ability to change shape, move, and fuse together, which also is another reason they're different from other organelles. They have the ability to kind of morph um, based on the needs of the cell. Now our chloroplasts, again, structure before function, he also is a double membrane, so he's got his outer membrane right here. And then the inner membrane is folded up into all of these stacks of poker chip looking things. Now, a couple terms for that. This folded up membrane right there is known as the thylakoid membrane. And the stacks of poker chips are known as granum or grana. So know that the thylakoid membrane is organized into grana. In between all of the grana is a fluid that is called stroma. All right. So those are the major parts that you need to know. All of the processes that happen within the chloroplast happen across the membranes of the grana and out in the stroma. Now again just like our mitochondria he had his membrane all folded up to increase surface area same thing right here. The surface of the grana is, or the surface of the thylakoid membrane is all folded up, which greatly increases its surface area and increases its efficiency. As far as what our chloroplasts do, y'all know they do photosynthesis. They take sunlight and carbon dioxide and water and they form oxygen and sugar. Now we'll have a terribly long detailed video on how that happens later on, but for now know that sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water in, oxygen and sugar out. And they're a member of a family of organelles only found in plants known as plastids. We're not going to get into them, just know that plants have got their own special set of organelles known as plastids. Chloroplasts are one of them. So hopefully that little tutorial is beneficial. Hopefully you got what you needed out of it. We'll see you again next time on the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you.